Okay, I need to do a quick uh, lesson on equilibrium for the AP class. Equilibrium means balancing forces and torques. If you do so, if you balance the forces and the torques, your object will have no acceleration not angular or linear acceleration. And this is often very desirable. In, in fact, if you're going to be a civil engineer, this is all you do. Equilibrium, balancing forces and torques, making sure there's no acceleration. I'm not going to say no movement. You know, the buildings in Los Angeles are designed to be able to move in you know, such a way as to dissipate uh, earthquake energy, but not fall apart at the same time. So it's that falling apart thing we're trying to avoid. Um, so the conditions for equilibrium, there are two conditions for equilibrium. I like to say there's three. But I'm being practical. Condition number one is the sum of all the vector forces must be zero. And the second condition is the sum of all the vector torques must be zero. And that gives you two equations, and you can solve for up to two unknowns. I'm like, yeah, I'm having a little issue with my focus here, I think. Better one or two. Oh, I went through it, right? There. 27%. That's where the focus is. All right. Now, I like to break this down further because the torque vector uh, really means that you just have two signs of torque, counterclockwise torques and clockwise torques. One's positive and one's negative. That's all you need to worry about here. Um, here, we break things into X and Y usually. So I like to think of it as three conditions. The X forces must uh, add up to zero. The Y forces must add up to zero. And of course, the torques must add up to zero. And when I say add up to zero, you can either sum them all up with their positive and negative signs and then have them equal to zero, or you can just say all the positive forces must equal all the negative forces, all the up forces must equal all the down forces, all the clockwise torques must be equal to all the counterclockwise torques. Um, so let's let's solve a little problem here. Let's do something simple first and then something a little more complicated. Let's let's talk about a uh, I don't know, you know, window washers and painters and stuff. They sometimes stand on these um, the scaffoldings or whatever they are, where, where they're hanging from. Uh, uh, ropes. And so there'll be some tension in the left hand rope and tension in the right hand rope. Now let's just say that this is a four meter long plank of wood and that it has a mass of 15 kilograms. I'd like to know what's the tension in the left rope and the tension in the right rope. Okay, in order to do this we're going to have to have the sum of all the forces in the y direction be equal to zero and the sum of all the torques be equal to zero. So we'll have to analyze the forces. It's good to draw a, an extended body diagram to put these things on. So there's the plank, and the plank has weight, m times g, and that's acting at its center. Its center of mass is halfway. Then there's the tension in the left, and then there's the tension in the right. So if I want to solve for the forces here, um, it's pretty clear that the sum of the tension on the left and the tension on the right must be equal to the weight of the plank. We can put numbers in, but we can't get too far because there's two unknowns. Over here, in order to do the torques, we need to choose a pivot point because torque is a force acting at a distance from a pivot point, and sometimes we need a sign of an angle if, uh, if, the, if the forces are not in the correct perpendicular direction. So there are three good choices for the pivot point um, that I can see. One would be the left-hand side of the plank, one would be the center of the plank, and the other would be the right-hand side. And these are all good choices because if you put the pivot point there in the middle, then this force does not create a torque. It does not create spinning because it is a force acting at a distance zero away from the pivot point. The lever arm is zero. Um, maybe we don't want to put uh, our pivot point in the center because maybe, um, you know, this is a force we know. Why don't we put the pivot point near one of the forces we don't know? And so I'm going to choose what is kind of a natural choice, the left hand end here. Okay? So that's where I'm going to put my pivot point. That means that the torque... There are two torques. This this TL does not create any torque. It is a force, but it's acting at a distance zero away from the pivot point. And you can choose the pivot point any, any place you want, by the way. You could choose it halfway to the halfway point, you know, the one quarter point. I don't care, but it's going to be a lot easier if you choose one of the ends. So we have two torques. One is going to try to turn it clockwise, and that torque is M times G, that's the force, times the distance, L over 2, that it is away from the pivot point. 
And on the other side, this string on the right hand side, this rope, is going to be pulling it in the counterclockwise clockwise direction. And that's a force of TR acting at a distance L away from the pivot point. And this one, of course, has no contribution. So this is actually great because we have all these numbers. We have 15, 10, and 2 is half of the length of the thing. And over here, we have TR times 4. Okay, so this is 300 equals 4 times TR, or TR equals, uh, what's half of 150? 75? Whoa, oh, Harman. 75 Newtons. And we can plug this back in over here to get that TL plus 75 must be equal to 150. So 2L must also equal 75 Newtons. And that's not really that earth-shattering, because I think we all suspected that these two ropes would have equal force in them, and they would support the weight of the, the, uh, the plank, which is 150. But we could use this same technique to solve a much more intricate problem. What if we have a person standing on our plank of wood? Same plank, same 4-meter plank, same 15 kilogram plank, same rope on the right, same rope on the left, but now we're going to put a dude here. He's going to be at the one meter mark, and he's going to have a mass of 70 kilograms. All right, drawing an extended body diagram. We draw the plank. Now, this is an extended body diagram for the plank. So we only need forces that are on the plank. There is a lifting force, TL, a lifting force, TR. There is the weight of the dude, which I'm going to say is capital MG. And there is the weight of the plank itself, which I'm going to call little MG. And we're going to choose our pivot point the same way we did before on the left-hand edge. Now the equations are a little more complicated. The sum of all the forces in the y direction must be zero. There are no forces in the x direction, so I'm getting off uh, a little easier than normal. That means that TL plus TR equals mg plus little mg. Sorry about my spasm there that created a splotch for the uh, g. Uh, this doesn't go too far, TL plus TR equals, okay, 70 times 10 is 700, um, 15 times 10 is 150, so 700 plus 150 is 850. All right, we didn't get too far. Now it's time to look at all the torques. Torques, we'll do the clockwise torques first. There is an M times G acting at a distance of one meter away from the pivot point. That's capital M. There is a little M times G acting at a distance two meters from the pivot point, and going the other way, is TR acting at a distance four meters away. These are all perpendicular to the plank, so we don't have to have any sine or cosine kind of thing going on there. Alrighty. So uh, M times G, let's see, that was uh, that was 70 times 700 times one is 700. Uh, 15, 150 times two, 300, and that's gonna equal four times TR. Okay, that's clearly a thousand, and a thousand divided by four, 250 newtons. All right, so there's more tension in the right-hand rope, uh, which we kind of expected because we have a lot more weight, a lot more mass on the on the plank. But let's put that back in. This says that TL plus 250 has to equal 850. Why then, if we subtract, TL turns out to be 600 newtons. And that's pretty interesting because there's an asymmetry. The left-hand rope has much more tension in it than the right-hand rope. And the reason for that is the person is standing much closer to the left-hand rope. It is having to pull up harder. That's because it is closer to the person, or the person is closer to the pivot point. This one over here is at such a large distance from anything that's going on in this end that it can have a smaller force acting at a larger distance and still have the appropriate torque to stop things from moving. So your choice of pivot point is good to choose a natural pivot point. This left end is a good natural pivot point. If I was to cut this rope, the the uh, plank would pivot around that corner. And any place where you have an unknown force acting, because then it drops out of the torque equation. So those are some good reasons to choose your pivot point to be there. Or the other end, that would have worked out, but we would have had to do more math to figure out how far away the dude was from, from, uh, from the right-hand end than from the left-hand end. 
All right, that's quite enough. Uh, I think that's a, a little lesson today on equilibrium. The problems get uh, more involved as we go, and we will practice with them.